Hey guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to look at the microscope photos of someone who shared them with me, and I'm going to analyze them on this video. And this is a photos of someone who just recently bought the war book, and he shared those photos with me to get my opinion what is according his scalp environment. And I decided to make a video about it because I think this is important for you guys to understand and see what potential issues there could be occurring in the scalp and how they can prevent or affect your treatment, right? So how they can affect the treatment effectiveness. When it comes to those pictures here, like if you look more closely to them, you can see that there is multiple issues. So first one that is most obvious is the redness around the follicles. And that kind of redness, it is called microinflammation. The difference between microinflammation and scalp inflammation is that, for example, if one is having scalp inflammation, it can cause more like a burning sensation, more itchiness, redness in larger areas, for example. But microinflammation, it is something that can be without itchiness. It can cause, for example, mild tingling. And it can also cause, for example, that one is having like a need for a scratching in the scalp a few times a day, for example, when is more stressed or does a physical work or workout, for example, one needs to scratch, your, uh, scratch his scalp, for example. And that is more like a microinflammatory problem. And if there is a lot of microinflammation, that the redness can become more severe, like there can be much more redness to the follicles. And uh, it is something that is also connected to DHT sensitivity, right? So, so for example, if one is very DHT sensitive, then also the redness will become more, more visible. And the thing with this guy is that he does take finasteride, like you can see that he also has adrenaline alopecia, like some of the fear are stronger and some of them are weaker, so there is definitely immunization going on as well. And he also applies topical finasteride, like so he's on oral uh, finasteride pill and also topical finasteride. But he still has that, uh, that microinflammation according on his scalp. And the thing with microinflammation is that it is something that can uh, affect the effect on the treatment. It's not, not as serious as scalp inflammatory problems, but it is still something that could potentially be a problem if you are having it. Right? So, so for example, if you are noticing microinflammation on the scalp, you want to address the factors that could be causing that there is more DHT sensitivity in your body. Right? So, so for example, even if you are taking finasteride or apply topical finasteride, there is still a potential issue with DHT sensitivity. Right? So addressing DHT sensitivity can help you to make those treatments much more effective, right? and also your follicles will become less DHT sensitive itself. Right? So for example, if you work on your diet, like work on your gut health, for example, work on your stress levels, work on other factors that could be affecting, let's say, lifestyle factors such as smoking, uh, alcohol, for example, all, all of them can affect your DHT sensitivity and cause my, more microinflammation. So that's one thing that I notice here. Another thing is that we can see is that, that the residue on the scalp as well, like as you can see the residue. And this is a residue that can occur because of the buildups, for example, like this guy is using minoxidil as well, like in combination with topical finasteride, so that the residue buildup is from that kind of treatment. And thing with a buildup or residue of the scalp, for example, from minoxidil, it is also something that you ideally want to remove, right? Because what happens is that it keeps building up on the scalp and at some point it will affect absorption of new minoxidil that keep applying, right? So, so you want to ideally remove it because it kind of causes that the minoxidil will become less effective because it will not be able to get to the follicle where it actually does its work. And when you look at the couple more things here, like you can also see some empty follicles here as well, like in multiple areas. So that's another thing that's occurring here. And if you look at this picture here, what is interesting to look at is that there is a bit strange structure to the follicles itself, like they are basically broken, right? And this kind of issue can occur because of multiple reasons. It can happen because of genetical factors, like there is some conditions that can cause this kind of problem, but it can also happen because of nutritional factors, for example, lack of protein can cause a similar issue. And it can also become a problem because of mechanical, mechanical damage to the follicles. Like in this guy's case, for example, what he has done is that he has done a lot of scalp massage. He has done a lot of brushing on the scalp and also microneedling. So for example, if one is doing a, like aggressive brushing on the scalp, it also can affect and damage the follicles itself. And if you look at the next picture, for example, you can see the follicles that are broken. They are in different lengths. Some of them are longer. Uh, like those on here, for example, and some of them are shorter, right? so some are nearly visible. And this is the issue, right? And uh, other things that can cause, for example, if you are using dermal or with uh, blades, for example, that could be potential issues that can occur and cause this kind of problem. And if you are someone who is not able to get a roller with real needles, then potentially you can use derma stamp or you can use derma pen, right? That those are good options for for someone who is not able to get a derma roll with real needles. But don't use derma roll with blades because that can damage your skin tissue, but it can also damage your follicles itself. And other things that potentially could be causing this problem for this guy is that he does a scalp massage and he does it quite aggressively, right? So, so for example, if you do scalp massage, 
make sure that you keep your hands and your fingers in one spot, one place, firm to your skin tissue, right? Don't move it around because it will cause friction and that friction can potentially affect the follicles, pull them out and break them, for example. So make sure that you, when you do scalp massage, check my videos, how I show how I do it, right? And you can see that I hold my fingertips or my hand firm to my scalp itself, right? I don't move it around when I massage it. On the other thing, again, you can see that there is residue. There is some yellowish uh, buildup around the follicles, which is also potential issues that needs to be addressed. And here as well, yellowish color and also residue, a lot of it actually, this photo here. And uh, like, there is potentially also some uh, creatine as well. Like it's a bit hard to say because there is so much residue, right? But uh, in any case, working on reducing that residue, for example, making sure that if you are doing, uh, let's say mechanical treatments such as brushing, uh, microneedling or scalp massage, make sure that you do use the correct methods for it. Like, so for example, brushing can be very helpful to remove minoxidil residue, but when you do brushing, you want to do it in a way that uh, you are using a brush that is unlikely to cause a problem, right? So, so for example, you can use a wet brush that I usually recommend in my program, or you can use like an exfoliating brush. Those are good options that are more gentle for the scalp itself, but also for the follicles, right? So those, those are good options. And also additionally, like if you are, for example, doing microneedling, make sure that you do use Dermastam, Dermapen, if you're not able to get a derma roller with real needles. So this is other tips that I want to share with you guys. And for that residue, for example, if your follicles are very weak, then you can remove residue, for example, by exfoliation on the scalp, like that is a potential way to do it. And uh, some, for example, would use Absalom Manager for this kind of propose, or you can try potentially use more stronger shampoo but again, like shampoo itself may not always be uh, enough to remove the residue, right? Because minoxidil residue, for example, it can be very hard, very resistant for shampoo. It's very, it can be very resistant to remove it. And brushing usually is more effective for it or doing exfoliation on the scalp. So this is my take on it for you guys. And uh, again, remember that the better scalp environment you have, the better results you can get from treatment and it will become more effective. And, uh, for you guys who struggle with the same issues, if you are someone who has similar issues on the scalp and you need more help and guidance for those problems, you can always book a session below. Video, we can speak, we can find out what is causing your problem and how you can solve that problem. Thanks for watching, see you guys and see you next time.